bits, te wiki o te reo Māori, Māori language wiki, kia kaha te reo Māori, let's make the Māori language strong. Well, in Ruatoki, roughly 20k south of Whakatane, inland at the base of the Uruwera Valley, this is something they live and breathe and teach. There at the local school, Te Farikura o Ruatoki, 170 students aged from year 1 to year 13 are fluent in both Te Reo Māori and English. Not such a big deal, you might think. Well, maybe not now, but in 1978, 40 years ago, when it became the first official bilingual school in the country, it was a mountain to climb. I called the Kuda today, hoping they'd know of someone who was there in 1978 and could give me his or her number. They did. Turu Hira Hare. She's teaching right now, they said, and they put me through. It sounds like it's a long way away. And it is, and it isn't. Kia ora. Kia ora. Is that Turu Hira? Speaking. She's been speaking all her life. Language is her tongue. More on that shortly. I phoned her in her classroom, which has been her second home. So how long have you been at that school for? Well, OK, all my life, really, you know, because we're from Dwatoki, and so I came here for school as a young child and then left for um, Tsurukira Māori Girls College in, in Martin. Then when I got married and had children, we moved home and um, it's history after that, really. And not just personal history, although it's that. My children all went to school here. And their children? I've got grandchildren here. So the whole thing is sort of um, embedded into my blood, my soul, you know, the whole thing about the kura. Yeah. But it's also our collective history and part of the history of a language because in 1978, only 40 years ago, in Turuhera was there, Te Farikura o Ruatoki officially became the first bilingual school in New Zealand. There were a lot of meetings here in the valley because I, um, I was a mother help come secretary, come everything in those <laughs> days. And I, I remember all the, the meetings in the valley, you know, John Aniho would come home and talk to everybody. About, and I think the fear in John Aniho in those days was that we were going to lose our language if we didn't bring it back into, if we didn't bring it into the kura. John Rangiho was one of the saviours of Te Reo Māori, tūhoi like Turuhira herself. In 1974, he helped establish the first Māori language preschool groups. Those first ones didn't last, but the idea would evolve into the Kohangareo movement. He was terrified the language was being lost and thought Ruatoki could be the small educational centre of a kind of rebirth. But first, the government and the Ministry of Education had to be persuaded it could work. You know, because it, it hadn't, it, there was there was there was no other um, example of this. Dratuki was the, you know, it was the beginning of it. And then we had a lot of meetings with ministers, with prime ministers, and I would be sitting there listening to all our, our elders fight for the kura. Because it didn't just take one hui; it took a whole year. A whole year to become a bilingual school. Yeah, a whole year and a, and, and a bit more to become a bilingual school. To understand the journey to bilingualism, English remained intact. This was simply a battle to have Māori added. Remember, this was 1978. Māori wasn't recognised as an official language in Aotearoa until 1987, nine years later. And making Ruatoki bilingual was taking place against a background in which self-belief had been lost. So pervasive was Pākehā culture, so effective had colonisation been that many Māori had been persuaded that things Māori were somehow inferior. Because mm. in those days, Tuhu was a very, very humble people, mm. and I use the word was wisely. <laughs> <laughs> You're not so humble anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but um, there were many, many whees, and there were many, many journeys to Wellington. Do you, and, did you ever go on any of those journeys? Yeah. And what were they like? Um, I, I, well, I was the one taking all the briefcases and all the papers and while um, Timotsi and Hirini Mabin and Farihuya and them did all the fighting. <laughs> the fighting? Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the, the bargaining with the, with, the, with the ministers. And, you know, it was, we even had been couch here. A lot of people um, came. And there was, there, there were 
also opposition from our own people. They didn't want bilingualism. They, they, they wanted mainstream, so they took all their children out into the mainstream schools in Whakatane and Taniatra. So that happened as well. And that was because they had had drummed into them that the Māori language yeah. had less value than yeah. English. And if yeah. you wanted a job, if you wanted to yeah. advance in the world, you had to... Isn't that a sad message for Māori yeah. people to have assimilated? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of our families, like back then in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, you know, there was a, there were full buses bringing children into Ruatoki from Whakatane, not from Nazi or other tribal areas, but there were also full buses leaving the valley to go take them out into the Parker schools. Yeah, and because of that, of that, exactly that, that there was, they, the kids weren't going to get anywhere with the real Māori in the Kura. It's extraordinary to think that was at the end of the 20th century, not the 19th, Māori children being bussed away from Māori language. But enough came, and teachers arrived and stayed, and Turuhira Hare put her heart and soul into her language and her children. She did a master's degree. What was your master's degree in? Um, Māori women in leadership roles. And she took her language and her leadership back to Ruatoki and its world-first kura. And she stayed. Are you in your classroom now? Yep. And and how are there any kids there? They sound very quiet. They're very well behaved if they're there. Is, is uh, I've got my day twelves and they're just finishing off their um, assignments for me. Yeah, they're pretty good. The kids here. Yeah. And they're absolutely bilingual. So they're fluent. Yep. They're fluent in Te Reo and yep. fluent in English. Yeah. Yeah. I teach Tuhu history, Māori performing arts, and Te Reo Rangatira. So what I do in my class is that I make sure and that the kids understand me when I say to them that I'm going to weave your, your, your mat, your life mat, so that you don't get cold, and I'm going to weave each and every one of you a cloak. And that cloak is not a physical cloak. It's education and knowledge. That's Turu Hirahare from Ruatoki. Uh, talking about an extraordinary life supporting and teaching the Māori language.